Hey, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bass. And uh, what I want to talk to you guys about today is reel speed. I had somebody ask me last week what I use different speed reels for, what sort of patterns, and how I decide between them. And I thought, you know, we've never done anything on reels. So it was a great idea. I uh, wanted to sit down here real quick out on Clear Lake, uh, take a minute out of the day, and just explain a little bit about my retrieve speeds why I do the different things I do. Um, I actually keep it very, very simple. Uh, I use personally primarily Shimano reels. Um, I expand a little bit, a little bit of Abu, a little bit of Luz. Uh, Tim uses almost exclusively Luz and Abu. He loves them, but for me, I just, I grew up on Shimano, still love the reels, great product. Uh, so I'm gonna talk to you about Shimano's just cause I'm familiar with them. Uh, but let's start with five to one. Basically, there's only two things out there that I'm gonna use any sort of a five to one or slower, well really I shouldn't say slower, I don't use four to ones. Five to one, there's really only two things I'm gonna do with that reel. Uh, my big bait reels, that's a five to one. My Calcutta 400B, uh, my 300 TEs, anything that you see where I'm using a big gold reel, they're always going to be five to one. I use those for uh, my big, big hard baits and all my big soft baits. So like Huddlestons and Baitsmiths and JSJs, all my big soft baits, the Osprey. Uh, those are baits that I'm gonna throw on a five to one. Now, you might wonder why, because once you hook a big fish, you wanna get them in the boat as quickly as possible. I'm always preaching that. But what you have to understand is that with those giant, giant fish, especially on a soft bait where they, they're able to close their mouth around that bait, uh, the amount of force that a 10, a 12, a 15, a 17 pound bass can put on your reel is unbelievable. And even though I wanna get them to the boat as quick as possible, if I'm throwing a seven to one and I hook a giant, giant bass and she gets her mouth shut, they'll actually lock up a reel. They, they put so much pressure on it that you can't get the handle to turn. Uh, I've had two fish over the last, I don't know how long I've been throwing swim baits, more than 10 years. I've had two fish that I can remember that locked up a Calcutta on me. Uh, and both times I lost those fish. There was nothing I could do about it. Uh, because once they, they're pulling so hard against you that you literally can't force the handle to turn. The gear ratio isn't low enough to force it. And once that happens, you're not putting forward pressure on that fish anymore and they can throw that bait. So for my giant baits, five to one. Uh, the other thing that I'm gonna do on five to one uh, is gonna be, of course, the giant, giant crankbaits. Um, although I still like throwing those on faster retrieve reels. Um, all the way up to like a 10XD, I still throw that on a seven to one sometimes. Really the only time I drop down to a five to one is when I'm tired, when, I, when I've been going for days and days and it's just too much work trying to work that thing, I'll drop down to a five to one just to make my life a little bit easier. Uh, I guess the only other place that I can think that you'd ever even want a slow, slow reel like that would maybe be punching, like this stuff, punching really heavy vegetation because again, you need to be able to just wrench on that reel and get it turning and get that fish out. Uh, but a lot of the time, even in these conditions, I'll use a six to one. Uh, the six to one, that's just kind of a, an intermediate speed reel. This is a Sitica. Uh, I carry a lot of Siticas on the boat. A lot of my clients will use my Siticas. Just a great all around speed. You can use it for everything. Uh, I don't know that a six to one, at least for me, really shines for anything, uh, but they work. It's just a good workhorse. If you're only gonna get one speed reel so that you feel consistent across all your rods, get a six to one uh, because you can do everything. Uh, and then of course your seven to ones. Um, Corrado 200, the E series, the E7 is a reel I still use a lot. I buy a lot of the old E series reels, uh, but now the new ones are sweet, the new Corrados. Uh, but again, seven to one, we'll get back on track here. That seven to one retrieve speed is what I throw almost everything on. Uh, if I didn't list it into the two or three categories I've talked about, I throw it on seven to one. 
buzz baits, crank baits, flipping, pitching, I don't know, everything. Skipping docks, everything I do, spinner baits, chatter baits, you name it, a seven to one retrieve speed. The beauty of a seven to one is you can always go slower. Right on a five to one, you can't make it go faster, but on a seven to one, you can always slow it down. So I mentioned throwing big, deep cranks, and most guys think seven to one, you can't do that. But the reality is all you do is turn the handle a little bit slower. Uh, you're not losing any depth. Your bait is still getting to the same depth because as you're turning that handle slower, you're still putting the same amount of pressure and the same amount of forward movement on the other end of the line. So for everything that doesn't involve absolutely massive fish that you have to torque on, in my opinion, you can't beat seven to one speed reels because again, you can always slow them down. But they thrive or they shine on like your burning lipless, uh, burning a swim jig, a buzz bait, anything where you've got to take up line quickly, seven to one's phenomenal, but I like it for almost everything. Such a good speed. Uh, I hope that makes some sense. I mean, they're really, to me, there's not a lot that goes into this process for me, uh, but I think it is important to understand what the different speeds do. Cause you know, that the downside of a seven to one, of course, is that torque. You have a lot less torque than you do with a smaller reel. So a giant, giant fish will lock you up and you won't be able to turn the handle. Uh, so you've got to think about that ahead of time. Think about the size of fish you plan to tangle with and then choose accordingly. I hope that makes sense. I appreciate your time. If you guys enjoyed the video, subscribe to our channel. New video every week. We'll talk to you soon. Hey guys, Tim Little, Matt Allen, out here uh, chasing that world record spotted bass. Matt and I have both spent hundreds if not thousands of hours out, out here in Northern California chasing this fish. Luckily today, finally blessed enough to get one of the giants that we've hooked. We've hooked it multiple times. Um, got a 10.38 on a certified scale. Uh, one of the biggest spotted bass.